Jumoke. This is in Spirit of Sunday Breakfast program. Now, Demetrius Lucas was a primary teacher in southeast London. And on a school trip to a farm in Oxfordshire, he was bitten by an infected tick. The infection went undiagnosed and untreated and eventually worked its way to his heart and brain. The tick infected him with Lyme disease, a disease that not many people know about. Demetrius now leads a science-based lobby group called Fight Lyme Now campaign. He joins me alongside the British NHS GP, Dr. Michael Wetzler, who is also part of the lobby group. Thank you ever so much for joining us. Demetrius, if I can come to you first, tell us a bit about uh, your experience in, in contracting Lyme disease. My experience is awful. But good morning to you, by the way. Thank you very much for having me on the show. Um, I, I, I contracted the infection back in 2005, but unfortunately, despite um, developing a rash, uh, which is called the erythema migrans and a 24-hour fever, my then GP missed um, the infection. And immediately after the bite, I developed recurrent infections around the body. You know, uh, the ones that I had were like prostatitis, sinusitis, uh, uh, helicobacter pylori, which affects the stomach, and they were recurrent. And then that carried on for about three years and and still carries on. But um, then it affected my brain, and, and I developed an inexplicable depression. And then it affected three years after that, I... I had a heart episode, which left me with a heart arrhythmia and a heart block. And then more recently, um, it affected my brain. And I now have um, a pituitary genoma, which is a form of brain tumor. It's just been a nightmare. Uh, so, but and just tell me, when exactly did they diagnose you with 2000, Lyme? 2012, seven years later. Seven years later. Seven years later, it took, and I had major surgery, abdominal surgery, because they suspected my my heart arrhythmia was being caused by a, um, a hiatal hernia overstimulating the vagus nerve, which wasn't the case. So I underwent that horrible procedure, which debilitated me oh, to the point where I couldn't work. So... Yeah, yeah, I lost my career. It, well, it sounds That's horrendous. Not. Let's bring in Dr. Michael Wetzler. Dr. Michael, yeah. just just explain to us, I, I, I mean, how difficult a diagnosis is Lyme disease in the first instance? First of all, good morning. Good morning. Um, and secondly, in terms of a disease, it is recognized in the UK as an acute disease. So it's not that difficult to, to diagnose as an acute disease. It's supposed to have a little rash, a circular rash on the body. It does have relatively simple, straightforward, febrile aches and pains symptoms. And if somebody has been out in the countryside and certainly if they know they've been bitten by a tick, the acute element of the disease is not that difficult to diagnose. The controversy arises in the word chronic, i.e., mm -hmm. It, in, the, in the UK, chronic ongoing Lyme disease is not really recognized, partly because the sensitivity of the test and the nature of the test that are used in the UK are different to those used in Europe and in America. There are two labs, which we use quite often in, in those two countries, which often diagnose a chronic Lyme disease uh, where before it was not acknowledged. Uh, one of the problems of Lyme disease, I don't know whether any of your listeners remember that uh, syphilis was described as the great mimicker. Well, nowadays, there's not much syphilis around. And nowadays, uh, Lyme disease is described as a great mimicker, i.e. it copies many other illnesses. You can have symptoms of a huge variety of nature, natures. And, and Demetrius has mentioned, unfortunately, a whole range of symptoms that could be under other headings but often do come under the heading of Lyme disease. And it is controversial. Uh, Demetrius and I have actually been in the House of Commons, not in the chamber, but in, in one of the rooms, having uh, a discussion with a whole range of doctors about the different viewpoints. And there is one, one last statement, then you can ask me anything else. <laughs> there is an international Lyme disease organization called ILADS that puts the, the the opposing view to the British to the British view. 
So is it, I mean, you mentioned there that it's not recognised or long-term chronic Lyme disease is not recognised here in the UK and, and about these tests. Um, is that, if that what? but in America, it, it sounds like it is. Is that right? It is. That's right. I mean, it, uh, the details are complicated, but antibodies are what grows in the body in response to infection. So uh, the body makes antibodies, and, they, and often the Lyme disease is just not strong enough to promote antibodies, and so the antibody test used in the UK is not necessarily as accurate as what they call the T-cell test, which measures just a general immune response, mm. which is used more in America and Germany. Demetrius, what do you, I mean, I know there's a campaign, yeah. as I said, what, what are you hoping to achieve with this campaign? Well, well, first and foremost, the the tests available to NHS clinicians um, need to be, I suppose, broadened. You know, we like the the T cell tests that are available in Germany, for example, uh, need to be used or adopted by the NHS. That's a good start, and perhaps a direct testing method uh, would be would be beneficial to improving the accuracy uh, and and. Uh, of diagnosing Lyme disease, a direct testing method, meaning they would be able to detect the actual pathogen in, in the blood and not necessarily measure the, the degree of immune response, you know, and also the, the recognition of chronic Lyme disease. Um, we, uh, uh, two of my other uh, uh, supporters or associates or carers that would be Dr. Armin Schwarzbach in Germany and, and Dr. Chris Newton in, in the UK, a research scientist. We visited uh, the Rare and Imported Pathogens Laboratory back in 2015 and we were told by Dr. Tim Brooks there, you know, that the the tests, the current tests used by NHS clinicians were not totally reliable. But their excuse back then was that we can't do anything about it because we don't have enough money. Mm. You know, and that really doesn't, considering our current circumstances and the money that's been spent on coronavirus, um, uh, that just seems inconsistent and unfair. You know, uh, also Lyme disease. I'm sure Dr. Uh, Wetzler will elaborate on this. Comes with co-infection. So when you get bitten, um, other pathogens pathogenic bacteria, organisms are transmitted into the body and I've fallen victim to victim to those as well. So mm. I don't know if Dr. Wetzler wants yeah. to talk about yeah. infections. Sure. <laughs> well, let's, I mean, I, I, I want because we're running out of time, but Dr. Wetzler, I mean, talking about that, if someone gets bitten, it, not everybody fall, falls presumably uh, into Lyme disease. What differentiates people one from the other? Is it just luck? I think there's a luck element, there's a, a health element, your body's own immunity in terms of fighting things off and if your general state of health is not so good, it's not going to fight it. I think also if it's recognized early on and it's well treated, it's unlikely to go into chronic disease. So it's mainly that sort of thing. And, and also then there is the next step is also the controversy around treatment because there are a whole range of different treatment modalities of the chronic condition, which, again, are not recognized here so much. Uh, and that's a difficulty. I know you, you straddle the world of traditional and contemporary medicine, so to speak. Um, do those skills help in any way with regards to treating this disease? I would say they do. I mean, I wouldn't say they are consistently successful, but they are often successful. And there are a range of different antibiotics that are used. There are a range of different natural substances used. There's one called artemisin. There's one called cemento. There's a new one called cryptolepsis sanguilenta. Uh, and they are there are actual studies that show that they actually work. So, uh, and that is the, the problem that somehow or another that those studies have not been taken on in the UK. Well, we'll have to leave it there. But my thanks to uh, Demetrius Lucas for sharing his experiences with us and also to uh, NHS GP, Dr. Michael Wetzler. Uh, the campaign is called the Fight Lime Now campaign, uh, which is a campaign to, I suppose, increase awareness 
uh, around Lyme disease and the realities of living with it. And of course, we heard earlier on about sickle cell anemia. The reality is that there are Lots of there are people who are affected directly by these diseases that aren't necessarily as well known, uh, but have devastating life impacts, uh, devastating impacts on their lives, on their livelihood. Uh, so it's always good to hear about them. Now, if you're affected by any of those or even more obscure diseases, would like to hear from you. Oh eight hundred seven three one two thousand.